Hey everybody, I'm so excited to do this video. With Thanksgiving coming up, I wanted to do a fun video on really fun Thanksgiving and colonial names. The colonial period of America dates between 1607 when the first English settlers landed to the time of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. It's based on the fact that here in America we were English colonies. And the settlers named in three ways. The names were either English, Hebrew based on the Bible, or Puritan influenced and named with more, a moral basis. And this name list is based on my favorite names from the colonial period and names that would immediately register as being colonial. And I wanted to bring up some great names that could be used today, but there are some on the list that probably couldn't be used, but they are still cool and a neat glimpse into the colonial naming era. Starting with the boys, the first name is Jamestown. Jamestown was the very first English settlement in the New World. The first Thanksgiving was held in Jamestown, and this name is a cool next step for the names James and Jameson, I think. Pilgrim. This list wouldn't be complete without it. This would make an amazing middle name. Squanto and Samoset. The settlers probably wouldn't have survived without the help of these Native Americans, and their names probably only for the very bravest of users, but once again, they would make cool middle names, especially if you're of Native American heritage. Plymouth. I think Plymouth is a quaint place name ready for recognition. Plymouth was settled 13 years after Jamestown, and I just really, really like this name. Brewster is cool if you like the surname trend. William Brewster was the first, um, he was a spiritual leader of Plymouth. And Bradford. William Bradford was the first governor. Miles is such a great name too, and this spelling makes it cooler. The famous and brave Miles Standish was depicted in Longfellow's poem, and it's a great poem. If you've never read it, you should go read it. Two children were born at sea on the way to Plymouth, and they were named Oceanus for the ocean and Peregrine because they were wandering, which I think that's pretty neat. And there were two brothers among the settlers' children named True Love and Wrestling, which I would never use, but I thought they were really interesting. Remember is another cool colonial name, along with Reason and Resolved. And Preserved is a neat one, along with the name Truth. And with some of these Puritan names, even though they have a cool factor, they probably could only work as middle names today. Amzi is another interesting colonial name, and so is Ozias. Ozias has such a cool flair. Samuel. This spelling of Samuel was used a lot, actually, which does come across as a modern twist. Even pronounced phonetically as Samuel is cool. Moses and Gideon were popular biblical names being used that are definitely ready for a comeback as first names, in my opinion. I saw the name Eli, which could also be pronounced as Eli, and I thought this name sounded really neat. It has a cool look to it, and Eli is a place in England. Boone, a nod to Daniel Boone who forged the Wilderness Trail. Eric Church just named his son Boone. Patriot is a way cool colonial name, and I love the nickname Pate. And did you know that the term Patriot actually came about at the beginning of the American Revolution? I think that's pretty cool. Some key men at the beginning of the Revolution who are synonymous with colonial names are Jefferson for Thomas Jefferson, Franklin for Benjamin Franklin, and Adams for John Adams. I think this name could definitely be a modern flair for the traditional name Adam. Quincy. John Quincy Adams was the son of John Adams and became a U.S. president. He grew up during the Revolution, which obviously had a major impact on his life. Quincy is a nice variation of Quinn. Hale, for Nathan Hale. At only 21 years old, he was the true embodiment of a patriot. He is, he, he's famous for saying, I only regret that I have put one life to give for my country. Revere. Paul Revere was a brave guy, for sure. Some cool names from the Declaration of Independence are Elbridge. Elbridge Gary became the inspiration for the term gerrymandering, which is the stalling tactic used in politics. <laughs> and Wythe, for George Wythe. He was Thomas Jefferson's mentor, and I think Wythe has a really cool sound to it. My favorite boy name from the colonial times was one of the first settlers of Plymouth. I saw his name, and it really caught my eye, and that's Elias Story. 
there's just something about that that is really appealing to me. It's, it's like a name from today that got misplaced back in time. For the girls, the first name is Mayflower. How could this list be complete without it? It's spunky and could definitely be used as a first name. The very first baby born in Jamestown was a little girl named Virginia Dare. How fitting it was, and it still has that pioneering quality to it. Pocahontas, <laughs> middle name totally. She was very helpful to the settlers, but what most probably don't know was she took on the Christian name of Rebecca, and that's kind of neat. There were a lot of Puritan names used for girls, more so than boys, I think. Mercy. Uh, was popular and there's a woman named Mercy Warren who was a lady and she was very good friends with the Adams and Thomas Jefferson and she wrote many plays and books about the revolution. Patience is another one. Humility, fear, thankful with two L's actually and faint not which made me laugh and desire. I was actually really surprised to see a baby girl named desire in colonial times. Given, I think, is also a really cool name, and so is Delight. The biblical name Keziah took off, and so did Susanna, and they're both absolutely gorgeous names. A cool twist on a Puritan name that was used is Constanta. It's like a cool feminine form of Constantine. A great colonial girl name is Isana. I, th I believe that's how it's pronounced. There's a lot of debate about that. Um, I haven't seen this name anywhere else, and it's such a sweet, gentle, gorgeous name that definitely deserves more attention. Isana is extremely rare, and not much is known about it, but it was was the name of one of Paul Revere's daughters. Molly is such a great name for the famous Molly Pitcher. Her real name was Mary Hayes, and she served water to the troops in a pitcher. And then when her husband was wounded, she manned the cannon for him, and that's quite a woman. <laughs> Speaking of strong women, Abigail for Abigail Adams is another nice name, even though it's kind of popular. And I dare say John Adams would not have succeeded if not for the support of his wife. Betsy, uh, for Betsy Ross, who created the first American flag. It's a cute name, ready for a comeback, I think. And we can't forget the name Liberty. That's what the whole colonial period was based on, and it's a strong and honorable name for any little girl. My favorite colonial girl's name is Wheatley, a great organic sounding name, and it's for Phyllis Wheatley, who was an African-American woman who was known for her brilliant mind and her patriotic poetry. Some cool things to mention about the colonial period was toward the end of it, middle names were consistently used more, and so were surnames as first names, which is kind of cool how we've all come full circle to surnames again. And another cool thing was the use of maiden names used as middle names. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below on names you liked or didn't like or what colonial name you loved the best that wasn't on here. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.